Good morning. So welcome to lungs part two. And yes, this time we'll be going for the real dissection. Achha. Two new things which I am introducing today. One, so there would be mediastinal views, right? Mediastinal views. That is right and left. So one image will be where we'll label everything, right? We'll we'll understand that which structures are what in detail. There would be one more image, and that would be like completely unlabeled. So that image would be for your practice. So this I have done at almost every level. Right? So that would be for your practice. This is one. And second, we'll also be looking at some of the cross-sectional images. This is what we start from this time, right? Cross sections. So today, say for example, we'll be watching the cross sections at T4 level and T8 level. So this is just considered that this is like a beginning for your CT scan, right? Or MRI, any of the cross sectional imaging. So here also, we'll first label all the structures, we'll understand all the structures, and then there would be images which will be for the like this right so this is these are the two things which you'll find in today's pdf and and as we proceed so let's start with the lungs now as we know that uh, if when we draw the lungs we draw it like this right and in classical cardiac notch so here is that heart Let's start heart like this, right? So this is the right lung, this is the left lung. Now when we really see the lungs, right? When we dissect the lungs, those lungs, they are deflated. Right? We won't be able to see actually how, the, how really the lungs look like in the real life. So over here, what has been done is, so you can notice a tube, right? A tube was put and from top with the hand, that, that hand air pump, right? The air was pushed. When the air was pushed, the lungs would inflate, right? So that's why we see that these are the inflated lungs. But the advantage is, I'll be able to show you some very good thing today, right? So these are the inflated lungs. It would be good for from the conceptual point, right? So that's the right lung and this is the left lung, right? And over here, you can easily identify that's the trachea. And that trachea getting divided into these principal bronchus or primary bronchus or main bronchus, right? So, primary or main bronchus. Okay. We'll also be watching bronchoscopy today. Just for one concept. So, here it is, right? That's how the lungs they really show. And this is the area that would be occupied by the by the heart, right? So we when we see this thing, right? These are the this is the apex of the lung, right? Topmost portion. So over here there would be rib number one because apex of lung it crosses beyond rib number rib number one, okay? Now see, as we rotate the lung, right, as we rotate the lung, right, that is, that is we take it out. So this is where we are watching the medial surface, right, it is the medial surface and that medial surface is having what's called as the hilum, that's called as the hilum. You can also call it as a root, root of the lung, right, a root of the lung and in this root, there would be one, see the trachea is dividing, right? So bronchus and you will we'll watch this thing in more detail. All these small portions, right? These small areas, right? All those small black portion. In fact, they are the vessels, the vessels which have been cut. So bronchus and blood vessels will be seen. By the end of today's session, you'll be able to identify all the structures right so bronchus and blood vessels they enter 
this surface this entire surface this entire surface it is also called as the mediastinal surface right it is also called as media stinal surface why media stinal surface because media stinum is what it is the space which is between two lungs right so if i just fast forward right we'll we'll come back to these images here right this is this is one of the image right so that's the right lung that's the left lung and the space between two lungs right this space this space this is what is called as the mediastinum perfect right mediastinum and it is this mediastinum which is comprising of which is comprising of heart major vessels esophagus trachea all those things out of all those structures why we are focusing only on trachea because trachea is the only structure in which there is air right and because the density of air is very different as compared to soft tissues so that's why on x-ray we'll be able to see it in a very clear way right now imagine if this right lung it develops big apical tumor right so obviously it is the soft sol space occupying lesion so it will push the mediastinum on the opposite side we won't be able to see any of the other structures because everywhere there is soft tissue but it is the trachea which will be able to see because trachea is as such though there are cartilaginous rings but today we'll watch it in more detail because trachea is as such soft right you know i i remember this is this is very similar to have you seen that hand shower right hand shower so in that the tube tube of hand shower many time it is many times it is like this but trachea is very similar to that right it is pretty flexible as such tough but as such flexible because the posterior wall is soft and the wall there are cartilage cartilage right so that's where we see the shift of trachea okay more as we come across that coming back to this so this is the mediastinal surface right because that that's where the mediastinum is another surface is over here which is called as the base this base is concave it has to be concave because over here it is in association with the dome of diaphragm right dome of diaphragm pretty fine and then there is only one surface which is left out and that is this outer surface right outer surface which is also called as the costal surface so on this costal surface we'll see impression of all the ribs because that is what is in association with the thorax so here it is see this is how it really looks like it is a smooth and it is convex right so convex costal surface convex costal surface right so these are the three surfaces see the anterior border how sharp the anterior border is right so that's the anterior border when we talk about the posterior border well the posterior border the entire lung is that rounded right so that's why when we see this posterior border so this posterior border is diffuse right this posterior border is smooth you can say it is smooth or it can also be because it is not very well defined so that's why we can say it is smooth while anterior border this is sharp right and yeah this one is apex right very important that's the tube through which we are injecting the air right so that we can see the lungs properly going further we are dealing with now the right lung right in right lung as we do that this is the right lung right right lung is divided into three parts this one is horizontal fissure correct fissure right it is the horizontal fissure and there is one oblique fissure right oblique fissure here they are this one is oblique fissure and this one is horizontal fissure so over here this is our superior lobe right this one is our superior lobe and this one that would be our inferior lobe correct inferior lobe left out this portion 
right that is the middle lobe middle lobe fair enough this is left lung that's our left lung and in left lung there is one oblique fissure so seen very crisply and dividing into that's the superior lobe and this one is inferior lobe Regarding the lingual, right, we'll see that. So here it is, right, the lungs. So this is oblique fissure. This one is horizontal fissure. So is it some congenital anomaly right because like we say that left lung it has got a uh, upper lobe and lower lobe superior lobe or inferior lobe right there is only one fissure that is oblique fissure but here we can see it very clearly over here definitely there is a horizontal fissure right don't strain much this is nothing but posterior view right this is posterior view so when we are watching from posterior side, so in fact, this is not our right lung. This is our, this is our right lung. It's not the left lung, and this one is the left lung as we are watching from behind, right? So that's why this one is the oblique fissure. What I wanted to emphasize was that if you watch it from the posterior side, there is no cardiac notch, right? They both are almost parallel. They both are almost parallel. They should be parallel now because all the way they'll be going till the back, till the back, because then the spine would be coming in between. But till that point, the lungs would be going all the way. This is important when you'll be auscultating because over here, when on the left side, you'll find that where the heart is, right? So that is not the correct. But on the posterior side, everywhere there is lung. So when we follow... For the, for the auscultation of lungs, when we follow the pattern of this, right? I, we'll talk about this auscultation separately when we'll be discussing clinicals, but this is the pattern when we auscultate. Over here, you are covering the maximum lungs for the auscultation, right? So this is the posterior view. The point is, there is no cardiac notch. They both are parallel. Compare this thing with when we saw the anterior view. See, see the anterior view. Right, I just remove this. Right, see, there is cardiac notch. Right, so such a big area, right, which is for heart. Right, so that's how they are arranged. So this is posterior. Okay. So that's that's like our mediastinum. Right, we talked about it. Now see, lungs are covered with a pleura. And that is called as the visceral pleura. Some concepts I keep on telling again and again as they are so important. Lungs, they are covered with visceral pleura and the thorax, the inside of the thorax is having the parietal pleura. So parietal pleura and visceral pleura, right? They both are in close approximation with each other and there is nothing in between. Right? There is nothing in between except the serous fluid. So, right, there is that parietal pleura. Right? Parietal pleura. And in between, there is that serous fluid. But it is this fluid which is generating, which is acting like a negative pressure and that's, that is preventing the lungs from collapse. Now, see the principle of physics. They are so important. We'll conduct one small experiment and see what happens. Right? So over here, just to visualize the whole thing, right? To visualize the mediastinum, all we can see is the anterior chest wall, right? Anterior chest wall, it has been removed. But rest of the things, they are almost untouched. It has been kept as it is. Moving further, right? See? The pleura, right? Let me spend one minute on this. This is thorax right the inside of the thorax and 
say that's our luck. So this pleura, this pleura will go like this. It will go on the inner surface, right? It will go onto the inner surface of thorax. From there, above the diaphragm, it will go up. It will go up till it will reach to the root. Now that's the root, right? That's the root through which the bronchus and all those blood vessels they are going now i am changing the color from here it will take turn it will take an inward turn and then this will continue as a visceral pleura all the way all the way and it returns at at the root and then once again it will reflect and it would reflect and it would continue as parietal pleura and it is in between this part over here right that's where the serous fluid is there right so this is how at hilum right at hilum can you really say that it is the visceral pleura right visceral pleura is in continuation with parietal pleura Right? parietal pleura so this is the thing this is how it's like a complete cavity right complete cavity completely sealed right it is totally sealed there is not a single break single breach it is totally sealed and there is a serous fluid serous fluid which keeps on forming right serous fluid in between so what really happens lungs have got tendency to collapse chest has got tendency to expand so it is because of this these two layers and they are they are in association with each other via serous fluid so they keep the lungs inflated and that's the reason say over here it is this portion this portion right it is this portion so when we take the lungs on one side we'll see that the reflection of the pleura this is what you are watching is the reflection of pleura reflection of pleura Right? So, where the serous visceral pleura and the parietal pleura, they are in continuation with each other. Right? At hilum. This one, this is hilum. Okay? See, this is how they really look like. The alveoli. This is a very zoomed thing. But see, you can see all those small small right spaces they all are alveoli they are alveoli so when we injected that it right it keeps on popping up right so that is alveoli so this is a close look of alveoli just these are all air spaces right they are nothing but these are air spaces for gaseous exchange or the gas exchange So actually, lung looks like this. But see, this is this is not same specimen. This is another specimen. This black portion. It, it is because he was the cousin brother of railway engine, right? Smoke, smoker's lung, exactly, right? Smoker's lung. See how beautiful the lung over here is. This is healthy lung. Right, how nice it looks like, healthy lung. And working so efficiently. And look at this lung. This is what really happens. Because we, and, and in case if you come with me into the anatomy museum, this is to still good. There are few specimens where the entire lung, you'll feel like, no, this is not lung, this is some other tissue. Right? It is fully black totally studded with with this carbon right so that's that's such a dangerous thing anyway this is inflated lung right it is inflated lung and here the same lung has been deflated right when the air is taken out right so this is the deflated lung 
Now, because this is from a cadaver, that's why we can have a liberty to push this lung on one side. And this is where we see that, see, we have actually created a space, right? And this is where there is parietal pleura. And this is where there would be the visceral pleura. Visceral pleura. Now here to things are like we have already opened that cavity, right? So everything has been exposed, right? All those. But see, this is intact, right? This is this is completely intact thoracic wall, right? This is intact thoracic wall. So what we do just to understand that how lungs collapse, right? And and in between that parietal pleura and visceral pleura, there is only fluid and there is nothing else. Nothing else, right? It's only this much. So now, these are, you can easily identify, right? These are all intercostal muscles, correct? Intercostal muscles, these are ribs, right? And these are all intercostal muscles. What we are doing is, we are just cutting those intercostal muscles. And right? we are keeping the ribs intact. And we are taking extreme care not to damage the parietal pleura. So what I mean to say is, say if we see it in cross section, so if this is the thoracic wall, and yes, that there would be the parietal pleura. So we'll very carefully scrape off, we'll very carefully cut down this intercostal muscles from this intercostal spaces. So we'll be working only in this much area and this much area. We'll not be touching anything else. Okay? See. So we start cutting it. Right? So this is how we shall proceed. And here is our first cut. We are putting the cut. Right? We are just cutting these ICS, intercostal muscles. And done. Right? See, we have cut, we have just cut the this portion, right? And and see, this is this is what right? These were intercostal muscles, these were intercostal muscles. Here the intercostal muscles removed, right? So intercostal muscles removed. And what we are watching is is this pleura and this one is parietal pleura parietal pleura so we are about to break this parietal pleura right and here is the cut right so we have cut so this cut over here is parietal pleura and what we are watching inside parietal pleura all these photographs they were taken at a very high pace right and this one that is your dissected Visceral pleura, correct? Na? Visceral pleura, which is covering the lungs, lung tissue. Now, as we said that lungs, they have got tendency to collapse. The moment this seal was broken, right? the moment parietal pleura was broken. Now, same thing can happen pathologically also. Maybe say some churi, right? stabbing or gunshot. Or, or any of the rib fracture and that has snapped off this parietal pleura. Any way the parietal pleura is broken, what happens? Over here, we can see the lung tissue and see what happened the within minutes after that. Hit this. See the lung collapsed. This is the collapsed lung. That's the collapsed lung. Because lungs... Yeah, negative pressure gone, exactly, right? That negative pressure gone. So lung, they are always lazy, always interested in getting collapsed, right? So this is what really happens. Once you have understood this, now, so rest of the all the things, whether it is emphysema in which the chest becomes bigger or say in collapse of any of the specific, say lobe of the lung, everything becomes very easy, right? So lung collapses. This is the lung collapse because... As air entered between that 
parietal and visceral pleura that is the pleural cavity right so as air entered into pleural cavity pleural cavity and when the air has entered into pleural cavity we call it pneumothorax pneumothorax pneumo means air so it is like air has entered into thorax so this is like i used to ask some sometimes in viva that in thorax so there is only air so then in pneumothorax what's new well air is into the pleural cavity and when we say hydropneumo right when we say hydropneumothorax that means there is some water also it has entered water component that has also entered right and that leads to this but basically the thing is that this seal is broken so that pressure which was keeping the whole things in into inflated state that is gone see one more right over here the anterior thoracic wall that has been removed so lungs and the mediastinum that is seen quite proper right but in order to see rest of the structures see what we have done what we have done is we have removed the heart right see over here this one is the heart so right that heart is removed so no heart here as we remove the heart we see lots and lots of structures right so what we are watching is the medial surface right we are watching the medial surface surfaces of right and left lung correct so this is seen let's zoom it slightly huh. and we have zoomed it and we just open the lungs slightly so that things can be seen in much better way easiest thing first see this is this one this one is aorta aorta right because that's the aorta the moment we remove the lungs two things they go right one the aorta goes so that has been cut and see can you see it is going from anterior to posterior so this is arch so just as aorta was going into the form of arch the cut has been made so behind it we can see trachea right that is trachea the level of trachea where it bifurcates this level of trachea where it bifurcates it's the same level as the angle of lui right that is the manubrio sternal junction angle of lui so it is at this angle something else also happens right so what i am telling is that angle of lui angle of lui that is manubrio sternal junction manubrio sternal sternal junction it is at this junction trachea bifurcates agreed trachea bifurcates but it is at the same junction when the ascending aorta right it ends and the arch of aorta starts arch of aorta starts and then arch of aorta ends and descending aorta starts right same level so this is the thing arch of aorta is over here right and we have put the cut just after this arch has started see so that's trachea this is arch now think like this this bigger structure right two big structures this one and this one these are pulmonary arteries right these are pulmonary artery pulmonary artery so pulmonary artery this is left and this one is right pulmonary artery now pulmonary artery you have to visualize a bit if you really join it like this and this this is what really is happening correct so this arch of aorta will be landing over here right and this this right and left it emerges from what it is from this pulmonary trunk right so and that pulmonary trunk then it divides into right and left pulmonary artery right so this is just for our 
visualization just for understanding okay right so aorta pulmonary artery we we go still deeper right can you see irregular these are all wide bore caliber right this is pulmonary artery but over here some irregular irregular right this one there is one behind these are right so this is pulmonary artery these are pulmonary veins so these are the veins which come out right and these are the pulmonary veins they come out and they will reach to they will reach to because this will be having pure blood so they'll reach to left atrium and from there to left ventricle and all the way the circulation now this i am not marking because this is for your understanding right same thing but zoomed view so see i'll just write then i'll erase it this is aorta this is trachea this is pulmonary artery this is pulmonary artery right this is left and this is right this is pulmonary vein pulmonary vein this one is pulmonary vein right even this even this see see the tube this tube can be seen correct so this is also pulmonary vein right it's one this one this one this one see how nice the book pictured right how nice it is so these are pulmonary veins which will be going into the left atrium right so this is for your practice i'm erasing all annotations right so for practice just for the understanding that see how wonderful this pulmonary artery this is right side and this is pulmonary artery left side they are seen and it becomes so easy to visualize that how this trunk would have been placed correct this is how and it divides same thing right okay now see this is when we remove when we remove these structure this is what see this is this one is correct pulmonary artery pulmonary artery and this one is our aorta dada right let's remove the aorta so when we remove the aorta we just see behind that's the trachea this is the cut end of the aorta right this is pulmonary artery this is pulmonary artery right right and left respectively and that's where we see that the trachea in its fullest that's the trachea another view this is the trachea which is which is like a complete sample right complete sample of the trachea in its fullest watch this part the top portion this that's cricoid cartilage cricoid cartilage right? so that's and this posterior wall right because this is what we are watching is anterior because then and then we can see all those all those c, c shaped rings right so this posterior wall posterior wall is soft it is soft right another characteristic of trachea is it is highly flexible right it is highly flexible it is not rigid highly flexible and these are the c shaped c shaped rings right all those things they are nothing but cartilage right. and then the division of trachea right into the form of principal bronchus right so right and left 
Now what we did is at this junction, at this junction, we just slice the trachea and then we are watching it. So this is what we are watching. And see how nicely it is seen one that C-shaped ring. Right? C-shaped ring. That's the posterior wall. So this is the posterior wall and this wall is soft. What I want you to see is See, this is right side, this is the left side. Okay? Right side and left side. Let's go back to, to one figure, one, one image. Yeah, this image. See, I'm drawing, this is trachea. This is trachea. And trachea divides into right and left. So trachea divides into right and trachea divides into left. Can you notice that the right side, this is the right side, is almost in continuation with the trachea. So whenever a baby, a small baby or in, if anyone swallows, right, when there is asphyxia, if he swallows something and, and you say that, okay, foreign body has been swallowed, and it has gone into the trachea and it has lodged into the lung. Which lung you will look for the most? First, watch for right. Because chances are in most of the cases, 90% of the cases, that one will straight away travel. While over here, it has to take at an angle. It has to go at an angle. So it is not straight. So that's why right lung, foreign body, Low, say lodged into right lung, this is far more common as compared to the left one, right? And when we do, when we do this scopy, see, you can, can you appreciate that over here on right side, the bus immediately after that, it is narrow. While in case of right side, it is going deeper and deeper and deeper. That's the right side, right? So practically we have just cut it and in order to see. I'll remove these markings so that you can always watch properly, right? See, bigger caliber and going deep. So that's, this is just for practice, right? To identify that's, that's the aorta and, and rest of the structures you know, right? You know it. Hmm. From the open bronchoscope, right? From the bronchoscope, this is this has been taken. So when you insert the bronchoscope and it is going further, 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 right? And you start watching it, that what is, which are the things which are seen? See over here. As as it goes, as it divides, right? What happens? The trachea divides. Right? And your bronchoscope, that is along with that camera. So you are watching this thing on the display, on, on your display. And in that, what you watch is, right? this is, this is like we are on to the left side. Right? This, is, this is the left, left bronchoscopy, left lung bronchoscopy. We won't be able to identify this is left, but because we know. But over here, see, you can watch, you have reached to the principal bronchus. And now, it is showing, going into the left upper lobe. And over here, see, it is going diagonal, right? So, this is left lower lobe. Obviously, in left upper lobe, right, right, it is subdividing further. But basically, this is how they are. One more. See this. Right? This is the very nice. Right side and left side. Right side, you can see that, yes, it is almost straight and it can go more deep. It is almost straight. While this is at an angle. At an angle. 
right? So that's why any of the foreign sub substance, once it goes in trachea, it straight away reaches to the right lung within no time. Huh. Uh, okay. This is for comparison that how the structures they are very closely associated with each other, right? So in this case, see the first one, things which we already know, right? Easy to identify. That's trachea, right? Will not pick it half as early. So trachea and this trachea is getting divided into right and left principal bronchus. So, principal bronchus. The arch of aorta, so that's the arch. And when that is arch, so you know about all these structures. Right? You know that. So, this one would be what? That brachiocephalic artery, right? brachiocephalic artery and it would be further subdivided into the right common carotid and the right subclavian, right? Right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery. So then where is left common carotid? Here it is, right? So that is left common carotid artery and this one is left, left subclavian artery. So far is fine this structure which is behind over here it is esophagus. It is esophagus. right? But what happens? This one is esophagus. Wood pipe. That's fine. Right? This arch of aorta and this one is what? This is descending aorta. Okay. But this is descending aorta, as it crosses, as it crosses the diaphragm, it happens like that it comes in front of the arch of the aorta, in front of the descending aorta. So when we'll take the section over here, we'll find that esophagus is more entirely situated as compared to the descending aorta. That's what we see, this important point, right? And that is when aorta, right, obviously the descending aorta, Right. Aorta is anterior to esophagus. Right, that's the point. But rest of the things, so they are itself explicated. Right, arch of aorta and all those bronchus, etc. But this you keep in mind that esophagus on top, it's the most posterior structure, and as you go down, right, it will be changing its position. So it is this aorta. Right? It is this aorta which is lying posteriormost, right? And from here it will go, it will enter into the into the stomach. Enter into the stomach. Ah. Now to understand things bit in much better way, say what we do is we do two things. One, this is a plain plain image. We'll try to identify the structures. After identification of the structures, we'll go for the real image, right? Real dissected image. And that is where we'll try to figure out the same structures in that. Right? So see how different they look. Uh, here it is, right? This is where we'll be identifying all the structures. Now, it, it looks a bit confusing, and when we say, okay, okay, see, this is, this is for practice. This I put for practice, right? See, this will study and here it is, right? How, how they look like. So that's why first let's talk about, let's talk about the image, right? So we have done two things just in order to see the right media stenum. Right? We want to see the right mediastinum. Orientation is vital. We are watching right mediastinum. It means that the chest is there, the right lung has been removed. And then we are watching from this angle. 
so that we are watching the right mediastinum. See, mediastinum was like this, correct? And then the chest. So we removed the chest wall, we removed the right lung, and all those things are removed, and now we are watching from here. So we are watching, in fact, what structures will be on the medial aspect or the mediastinal surface of the right lung, correct? The structures which are here. Those are the structures which we want to see. Right? Then we'll go for the specific. So clear? So right mediastinum surface is being watched. The topmost, this top one, it has to be esophagus. Right, that is esophagus. The next one, which is anterior, the rings-like structure, and that is trachea. So something which you can never miss. That is easy. Then here is the heart. Right. So that is covered by what pericardium. So yeah, that is pericardium. There is emergence of there is emergence of this aorta. Right. And and it goes up, right? This one is red, is ascending aorta. Ascending aorta. Why we are not watching ascending aorta so crisply over here? We are not watching because this is right mediastinum. Right? This is right mediastinum. When we'll be looking at this, this, this is for your practice, right? It is the same image, this and this. So this is for practice. For practice. We just go on this side. See, this is the left mediastinum, right? How wonderful the complete arch of aorta, all the way ascending arch and going down, right? So on the right side, once again, we go on the right side, this right side. What we are watching is the vena cava, right? So this one, I just changed the color. This one is the superior vena cava. It is the superior vena cava which enters into the right atrium, right? So this is this would, would be the right atrium, right? And the right ventricle. But right now everything is covered into the pericardium, right? So this right atrium, right ventricle, they all are covered with pericardium. Superior vena cava is there, fine. But which is that vein which comes all the way from below and then it enters near the root of this right atrium into the superior vena cava and that one is this is which side this is right side on right side there was a zygus right there was a zygus this is a zygus what a zygus was doing a zygus was doing all the intercostal vessels right all those intercostal vessels they were veins they were coming over here so a zygos vein this is the zygos vein so so far all good right this particular shape, right? This one. All the structures, all the structures, right, which you see over here, that is nothing but hilum. This one is hilum. This one. Right? So that is hilum. And in hilum, we watch what we saw right the right bronchi right then we'll watch pulmonary artery right sided and pulmonary veins right that would be many and that's what we see into the hilum two structures which are to be seen in the form of nerves now normally they are not seen very clearly right and we'll see that whether we can really see it bit properly onto our dissection. First, a very long one, right, which goes all the way down, it pierces the, this is diaphragm, right, this is dome, dome of diaphragm. So, which pierces the dome of diaphragm and then it goes down. Because it is diaphragm, so it has to be right phrenic. Anything related to diaphragm is phrenic, so it is right phrenic now. We are interested in one more now, and that is the vagus, right? See the vagus, 
this is going all the way to the dome of diaphragm and see it is supplying so this nerve is so important because if anything goes wrong to this nerve diaphragm is paralyzed when the diaphragm is paralyzed our silent breathing our normal inspiration is thanks to diaphragm so that is affected because in inspiration it is an active process expiration it is a passive process force inspiration force expiration when the muscle muscles are involved it is active process but normal breathing is only with the help of diaphragm right diaphragm constantly keeps on working can you appreciate i just zoom this there is one more now which is going all the way from here 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 taking turn and then it pierces the dome of diaphragm and goes below so you are right that is that one is vagus this one right that is right vagus now right this will be going to the digestive system so over here this is hilum right and in hilum we have got all those pulmonary artery veins right and the bronchus this blue structure this we identified as azygous right what about others now see in in superior vena cava superior vena cava is formed by the combination of right brachiocephalic vein and the left brachiocephalic vein left brachiocephalic vein will come from the opposite side right from the opposite side we are on the on the right side so that's why what we are now watching over here is the right brachiocephalic vein this one is right brachiocephalic vein right right brachiocephalic vein this right brachiocephalic vein where the azygous vein that is joining and then it is becoming superior vena cava going inside and this is the right brachiocephalic and this right brachiocephalic how it forms it forms by the combination of that internal jugular and subclavian see wonderfully seen over here right and over here now it is becoming khichdi but still i i hope you can you are understanding it <laughs> right so this one as it is coming right it is right subclavian vein right and this right subclavian vein it is it is joining this coming from the top that is right internal jugular vein correct so then so that's the right subclavian this is the right internal jugular then it is forming this brachiocephalic and that brachiocephalic this is the right brachiocephalic when it meets the left brachiocephalic right so this is right brachiocephalic similarly left brachiocephalic and it leads to formation of superior vena cava and in that joins the azygous azygous that is what you see over here right and yes you will be able to see these things another part the plexus is which you are watching right the plexus is right you know about we talked about sympathetic trunk sympathetic trunk all these structure these yellow yellow beads like thing right these 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 are ganglia right these are ganglia can we see it yes we'll be watching it so over here that is sympathetic trunk right sympathetic trunk and in sympathetic trunk two important nerves they will be coming out that is the greater splanchnic and the lesser splanchnic right so over here this bigger one over here this one is greater splanchnic <coughs> greater splanchnic and this one is the lesser splanchnic lesser splanchnic nerves right these are nerves dome of diaphragm almost all the structures we have now seen in this theek now 
once you understand this then same image is over here right this is this is for practice so i'm keeping it completely clean right so to it yeah right so same image over here so go through this ha huh. this is our first rib right this one this one is rib number 1 rib number 1 and why are this portion above right there would be when the lungs would be there so it will the apex which will be coming out website no these are the collections from various places so many places acha right so now this is for your practice now watch for this orient yourself very properly first right and will will in fact zoom it what we are watching is right mediastinal right how can we say this is right mediastinal because heart is not seen heart is not seen to its fullest so let's compare that how the heart would really look like when we'll be watching it see this is heart see this is heart something which you just can't miss this one is heart right very nice and see how wonderfully the aorta which is coming out that can be seen so yes this is definitely the right mediastinum right so this is the right mediastinal or mediastinum wall so this one would be what this one would be the dome right the dome of diaphragm so this is dome of diaphragm we are picking up easy things first dome of diaphragm just in front right so this is the small portion what we are watching this so that is the heart right so we are watching this as the right atrium and then we watch this as the right ventricle because right atrium it is forming the right side of the border right and this is the right ventricle which will form the slightly right side and then the full front full front so this is right ventricle so far so good from the right atrium there would be superior vena cava right the superior vena cava is landing into it here is the superior vena cava as we see right see it is going into the right atrium perfect and just in front of the superior vena cava right you will see ascending aorta right so here it is this is the ascending aorta ascending aorta bus it will be seen only this much because then so it will be taking turn and it will be going on the opposite side right next see all the structures right the things which which have been cut from the side right can you really figure out this entire hilum this one this one is hilum right this one is hilum all these structures right see they have been cut so primary bronchus right then All, all those pulmonary veins right Pulm uh, they they all are cut one big structure which is very nicely seen very nicely seen and that would be say if you if you just focus on this part right this is superior vena cava this one is inferior vena cava right and if you remember we talked about that inferior vena cava it it just enters it pierces the diaphragm and immediately it enters into the right atrium and that's how it continues acha i am just taking this thing off because this part we we write it on this side right so that is inferior vena cava because this is a major nerve which is going for that i'll just zoom it see this is the nerve right this structure is different and i am talking about this nerve
this now. Right. Then now which is supplying the diaphragm and that one is the right phrenic. No. no, exactly, right phrenic. Right. Two another good structures. <clears throat> Can you appreciate that there is a bone, bone over here, right? See, see, this is a bone, right? A bone which is over here. In thorax, there is only one bone which is horizontally situated, right? The right clavicle. Right clavicle. See, sometimes things look very confusing, right? When we look at them. But if you develop the habit like this, very soon you'll be able to see even the all the cross sections, right? Cross section imaging very easily. Achha. Straight away, just by the look, can you identify? Can you identify that where exactly? See, these are cut ribs, right? These are all ribs, right? These are the cut ribs. Cut ribs. And all these are, see, these are ribs, right? And of what you are watching over here, this one, this one, these are all intercostal, intercostal veins, arteries, nerves, right? All those things, right? They are, that, that would be the point. Next to it, right? Just next to, deep to it, you can watch this, another structure which is going like this 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 see this one this is sympathetic plexus how can we say that it is sympathetic plexus because of these white areas see these white areas white areas these are all ganglia these are all ganglia right see these are all ganglia so thus when we see it in real it is so different because now as i as i have drawn this I just zoom it and then you will appreciate that yes, yes, it, it can be. This is sympathetic plexus, right? Sympathetic trunk. This is sympathetic trunk. This one, right? See? See the ganglia, 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 right? The ganglia, right? Here, here, here. And I now remove this. See, this is the structure. Right? So that is sympathetic trunk. If you have picked up sympathetic trunk, it would be very easy, just below, right? As it comes down, this sympathetic trunk is now dividing into, is going into one now, right? See? how separate it is. This is quite thick, right? If I really draw it, this is quite thick. And over here, this is a small nerve which is bifurcating, which is going. This is greater splanchnic, right? This one, exactly that one. This one is greater splanchnic. Greater splanchnic now. Lesser, well, not very much appreciable, but greater splanchnic now that is quite easily seen. Even if you identify this much, that's that's sufficient, right? Because see, rest of the structures, I see all you have to do. This is superior vena cava, right? Now let me ask you: this is superior vena cava, correct? This superior vena cava, oh, you can watch one more very good structure. This superior vena cava, as it is. How it is formed? We said that it is formed by the combination of superior vena cava, right? Right and left brachiocephalic vein, right? See, see, it is it is forming, right? This is superior vena cava, and over here, over here, right from, right, it is forming, and this is what is happening. But then, if it is it is superior vena cava, then something was entering into that, right? Something was entering into that 
and that one was a zygous vein. See the zygous vein. It is. I just highlight it, and then you will be very happy. I'm putting it with green. See this. Right now, see. Can you see a dark shadow? This one. That is a zygous. A zygous wing. So here it is. I'm just putting those dots, small dots, right? That's the path of a zygous, and and here it enters, right? It enters into the base of this superior vena cava. Zoom, yeah, sure, why not? Just let me. And I'm removing this also, right? Just this one is a zygous. And let me zoom. This one, this, this dot which I put, right? That one is a zygous. Say this one. Now removing it. Okay. So that is a zygous. <laughs> so these are the structures which you try to identify, right? Got it. Good. Now let's move on to the other side. Right? This is our so this is our left mediastinum, right? So in left mediastinum, what what do we get? Left mediastinum. So straight away, this would be the left ventricle. Right, left ventricle covered by this pericardium. This one is aorta, so no big problem. And the arch of aorta, descending aorta, right? descending aorta, arch. And in arch, you come across three major things, right? Three major. One, which was the brachiocephalic artery, and then the top, which goes on to the form of the left internal carotid, left common carotid, and the left subclavian. Right, so that can be seen very clearly. Right over here, this and this. I'm not writing it, right, because there are other structures and we'll need space for that. One good one, this big, big nerve which is going all the way to the diaphragm because this is dome of diaphragm, right? So this all the way which is coming from the top, this part that is the left phrenic. Left phrenic. Left phrenic is very eminent on both the sides, goes straight away down, right? At this arch, there are two major nerves. See this one which is going all the way down, that is the left phrenic, and one which is crossing this arch of aorta, and that is left vagus. Left vagus. Right? Obviously, this portion I'm just writing is as hilum. So, we have everything over there, principal bronchus, we have got this pulmonary pulmonary artery, that is right pulmonary artery, these are the pulmonary veins, right, these are the bronchus, right, and that entire thing is hilum. Same with sympathetic trunk, right, sympathetic trunk can be seen and now there should not be any problem in identifying this is the greater splanchnic, greater splanchnic now and this one. This one is the lesser splanchnic now, lesser splanchnic now, and this one is our sympathetic trunk, right? Sympathetic trunk, good. This one would be our rib number one, first rib, rib one. These are the important structures which are to be seen, and yes, obviously the trachea and the esophagus. Right, that you already know. For the practice, and here is how things look like, right, when it comes to the real specimen. 
luckily in this so many things are seen with much better clarity first instantly which you will notice is is this this is so wonderful the left phrenic now right see it is going on this dome of diaphragm that's our dome of diaphragm right left dome of diaphragm and that's why that's the left hand the heart the big right so this one would be the apex of the heart right apex apex of heart and this one would be the the anterior portion would be the right ventricle and this bigger one that one would be the left ventricle true right because anterior it is formed by the this is anterior right by the way this would be the anterior thick and this one is posterior because heart is more anterior right as compared to this and this is all the back side all those cut end of the ribs you can see all those cut end of the ribs right so the space has been created just to watch and over here from left ventricle see this one this one right it is going all the way are taking turn this one is our aorta and this is arch of aorta arch of aorta right so and if this is right ventricle see in between this is right ventricle and i'm drawing this right i'm drawing this so what's this right this is outlet right and this one is the pulmonary trunk right this is the pulmonary trunk which will be further divided into say right side and left side right it will go so that is the pulmonary trunk the posterior portion so this will be the posterior portion so that one would be the left atrium because left atrium forms the back of the back of the heart it is posteriorly situated right okay so we have talked about yeah the sympathetic trunk right that is fine but there is one another also very fine now as i told you that it is seen so nicely so i am tempted to zoom it see this big one this one right this one was the vagus uh, this one was the phrenic and this one is vagus this is left vagus no and all these which are which you are watching they are nothing but sympathetic trunk right sympathetic trunk and in sympathetic trunk what we are watching as they come up right this one will be the greater splanchnic no right greater splanchnic nerves as they come down so these are the main structures which we must know this is for practice ha huh. now that's the cross section right this is a very crude cross section to be honest this is like for your for your practice means you should really draw it and and you should try to identify the structure right because it is very much easy to draw the level is this is cs cross section at t4 so immediately we know this is anterior this is posterior right because this vertebra this is t4 so this is posterior right so level is t4 at t4 above at the top level right this is what this is esophagus esophagus right and just in front of esophagus this one is trachea right because of its shape this is t c shaped cartilage so that is easy this big structure it can none other than the arch of aorta right it is the arch of aorta this arch of aorta so this tells us that at the level of t4 arch of aorta is taking actually the turn like this like this so if we take a section like this so instead of just one tube right 
this whole thing would look like this. It it will look like this. This is how how the whole whole portion will look like a big opening. But as such, it is just a tube, right? Okay. Then the structure. Uh -huh. The structure over here. This one would be the right lung. This one would be the left lung, right? But there is one this right this one would be what because here it is it would be superior vena cava and the vein which is near to superior vena cava so it is has to be there is no other such big structure as this and that is a zygous vein right because the zygous vein meet, will be meeting over there now with superior vena cava on right hand side you notice that there was phrenic now right on the on the right side Right, so here it is. This particular nerve is the right phrenic nerve. Now things are seen so right very clearly over here, but when you'll see it in CT scan, you'll find that at times they are like just dot. Yeah, obviously, because the nerve itself is so thin, and when it is a slice is taken, so it will appear as a very small dot. Right. But this is right phrenic nerve, so then corresponding to that on the left side, it has to be the left phrenic left phrenic nerve right so that is right phrenic nerve and the left phrenic nerve this big one big one which is lying almost on the heart it was lying on the heart and it was going all the way down right what could what could it be right which was going all the way right so that is vagus right so here it is this one and it is in fact I'll, I'll mark it as red over here this one right and this one these are vagus so this one is left vagus now so why left vagus now right so then if that is left vagus what which structure is this such a big structure such a big structure right which one is this This is a recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now, such a big nerve and is seen just as a dot because see such long pen. But when we take a section, right, so it will appear as, as only a small circle. But the way arch of aorta was crossing and we took a section at that level, so it, it is looking like a pipe. Same way over here, this left recurrent laryngeal nerve will be appearing like this. But it is it is like when the section is literally passing through exactly in, at that level slight above or slight lower we might miss this thing that's why sections they are taken at a every five millimeter level right and when in doubt so you can even adjust sitting on the terminal you can adjust plus one plus two right so that you get exactly what you really want it varies from patient to patient but this is like developing the thought process when the thought process develops that, okay, these are the things which I see. Are they normal? Sitting at a normal position? Yes, all good. If not, so yes, now there is some. Uh, what is the red part in anterior portion? Very good question. Now that is, right, I'll just come to that. This is left recurrent, recurrent laryngeal now. Now this is so, so vital now. Right? Recurrent laryngeal nerve because if this nerve gets involved into into the carcinoma of lung right and if this is involved it leads to hoarseness of voice and that is what you will find when will be when you'll see my head and neck portion especially the larynx part right because larynx is so important as multiple nerves they are handling your voice Right? Because you can handle voice, pitch, right, volume, everything. Okay, this portion, which is just behind, because this is what? This is sternum, manubrium, sterni, right? And this is nothing but thymus. Very important for our immune system, thymus, right? So that red portion is the thymus, right? So these are the structures which you which you should know. And, uh huh and and these these chota sa dots which are right we just ignored this the, these dots 
But well, these dots, they are just near to what? Vertebra. Right? Vertebra. Only one possibility. Sympathetic trunk. Sympathetic trunk. Because there is no other nerve which can be over there. Right? And you will find, as you will take the sections, you will find that in every section, right, those dots are there. So, that is the sympathetic trunk. Right? And very disciplined way, it would be just at the edges because, because you saw that sympathetic trunk is traveling all the way from top to bottom, right? So, in every section, you'll find it at this point only, right? So, this is the thing. This is for your practice, right? So, we leave it, we leave it as it is. Okay. Now, see this image. This is also a cross section, right? This is a cross section at T8, cross section taken at T8. Just by the looks only, you will say that yes, we have changed the position, right? So now this is posterior, right? This side is posterior and this side is anterior because this is our sternum, right? That's our sternum. Here the heart has come. Right? See the heart has come. So heart will be covered into pericardium. Right, and when we see, so you have to watch from that perspective that what is anterior, what is posterior. So this is posterior. This means this would be left atrium because this is posterior. So in posterior, that when left atrium is enlarged, we said that during the barium swallow, a uh, green dot near. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. We'll go to your eyes. Okay, what could it be? What could it be? Thoracic duct. This one, I think you are talking about. Right. Are you talking about this? If I am not mistaken, right? I'm just. I'll just zoom this. Are you talking about this portion? Right. If you are talking about that portion, right? I'll just write it over here. It is thoracic. This one. Yes, no? Ha. Okay. Good. Good that you noticed it. Good one. Right? So that is thoracic duct. Now everything marked. Yeah. So coming back to this left atrium, and when you say when there is left atrial enlargement, so then it will be exerting pressure on esophagus. So here is our esophagus. Esophagus. Right? See how close, so it has to be, right? And such big vessel, only one vessel can be there, so no need. This is aorta, right? And and which one could it be? This one, right? Which which vein? It is vein, right? Which vein could it be? So don't say superior vena cava, right? Right? Don't say superior vena cava because superior vena cava won't be over here, right? And inferior vena cava, well, that though is no way, it, it straight up enters. This is in between, right? This is azygous, right? Because it is this azygous as it will go up and then it will be entering into the, into the superior vena cava. So this is our azygous vein, azygous vein, right? So far, all good, right? And yes, obviously, this is this is the right side, and this is the left side. Correct. Bus. Bagi to left atrium. You know about this. There would be the right ventricle. It would be in front, right? And the right atrium, which will be forming the, which will be forming the border. And the, that's the, and the left ventricle would be over here, right? These are all oblique fissures, right? This will be like oblique fissure, right? The left oblique fissure and similarly the right oblique fissure and the accordingly the lungs are there. 
this space in between this space that is the pleural space or pleural cavity so here if you if you really trace it so we can trace it like this see the pleural cavity as it runs 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 right all the way all the way and then it returns right and see at the hilum it takes a u turn right and it goes all the way now it is what it is becoming the parietal pleura it is going out 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 and taking turn going back going back going back and meeting so this is the hilum at hilum it reflects right at hilum it reflects so got it so over here if you'll follow if you'll follow these any pick up one line follow it all the way you'll understand that it is at hilum this is at hilum where the parietal pleura and visceral pleura meet parietal pleura and visceral pleura meet this is for practice so that's it for today right and next time we'll be taking the clinical aspects so my i'm thinking of taking ct scan mri and uh, and the clinical pathologies right along with with some very good cases so thank you so much and see you tomorrow i see you day after tomorrow right because this friday and saturday two days will be giving to this clinical aspects the practical aspects right pat scan sure i can show you like i'll show you the pat scan also no worries definitely right so we'll i'll just write it down here only right so we'll we'll watch ct scan Achha. regarding the mri see because in mri there would be T1 weighted and T2 weighted images, right? Long T1, short T1. Now, without the explanation of that, what exactly is the principle of T1 and T2, right? It won't appeal you a appeal you much. But hang on for some time. Say for MRI, you just watch the structures, right? And then later on, when we'll be taking one extra session on only CT scan and only MRI, that is the sectional radiography. At that point, we'll be discussing it in more detail, right? Next time when we'll be, because if I keep on explaining how the MRI images are formed, what exactly is T1, T2, we'll, we'll spend the whole time in that only, right? And yes, you want to see the PAT images. So I'll show you PAT and even SPAT. Single positron emission computerized tomography. And SPAT, we'll, we'll see both. And even we'll see ultrasound. So in, in other words, the pathos, right? All the pathologies, right? What can really occur? Very interesting thing. And uh, it will give you a very nice perspective that so many things can go wrong in the lungs. And that's the reason why it is so important to have your cardiovascular system so well, right? Okay. So thank you so much and see you next time. Bye-bye.